हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल एंड वेलकम बैक टू दिस प्ले लिस्ट ऑफ बेजिक्स ऑफ पावर इलेक्ट्रो पावर सिस्टम्स इन दिस वीडियो फ्रॉम दिस वीडियो ऑनवर्ड्स वी आर स्टार्टिंग अ वेरी न्यू चैप्टर व्हिच इज कॉल्ड रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ पावर सिस्टम कंपोनेंट्स इन दिस चैप्टर वी विल बी गोइंग थ्रू हाउ डू वी रिप्रेजेंट डिफरेंट पावर सिस्टम कंपोनेंट्स Uh, with the help of single line diagram how do we represent different components uh, different uh, types of components in the single line diagram we will be um, going further in power unit system uh, if you remember in the first uh, first chapter which uh, we have just completed in last lecture in that we have discussed uh, about what is power what is power triangle active power reactive power right we have seen what is apparent power we have seen uh, why do we need to compensate the reactive power and then we have seen the techniques of uh, uh, reactive power compensation we have also seen uh, star connection delta connection then star to delta transformation tra uh, delta to star transformation uh, we have seen power unit systems we have seen the basics of power unit systems we have seen percentage method so today we are going to uh, start with the representation of power system components and uh for doing that you must know what are some symbols which are uh, used which are the standard symbols which are there for the uh for uh, drawing a single line diagram in uh or single line diagram of any power system resource like uh, if you want to draw a single line diagram of a generating station or a substation okay so you will need these symbols in order to uh, draw the single line diagram of that substation okay so before diving into this uh, this uh, line diagram itself uh, there are few things i want to discuss with you uh, like uh, whenever we uh, whenever we want to do uh, whenever we want to calculate parameters okay for a transmission line uh when we whenever we want to calculate the performance where whenever we want to do the performance analysis of transmission line there are four parameters which are very important to know okay and what are those parameters first is the series resistance of course of transmission line then again series inductance of again transmission line shunt capacitance and conductance of the same line okay so all these four parameters which i've just talked about all these four parameters are distributed over the uh, entire length of your uh, uh, transmission line okay so um, it's not going to be like that uh, here we are having a uh, different uh, capacitance than somewhere else somehow different of the same line okay so uh, the all four parameters are distributed over the entire length of my transmission line okay but always remember uh, any transmission line or any line is never perfect okay so uh there is possibility that uh, a leakage of current may take place okay uh the leakage of current uh, may flow over the surface of insulators for say okay the insulators which uh, the insulators which are supporting your line right that can happen it can happen in any situation like if, if there is a rainy condition is on if uh we are having snowy conditions if you are having a bad bad weather if there is a hurricane or gale going going on right so in such conditions it is possible that uh, uh leakage current may flow through the insulators so line is not a perfect but this leakage current which i i was just talking about this currents are simulated by shunt conductance okay these currents are simulated by shunt conductance and uh, this is in parallel with the system capacitance okay so they are simulated by uh, always simulated by shunt uh, shunt conductance and they are in parallel with the capacitance system capacitance okay but uh, whatever the leakage current will be the uh, value of uh, that current in amperes will be very small because th that is a leakage current right so uh, whenever we calculate uh, the parameters of transmission line what do we do about leakage current we uh, we what do we do we neglect the uh, shunt conductance 
in the calculation of uh, uh, performance of transmission line okay so whenever we draw a diagram this uh, single line diagram or any diagram which uh, what does it do it represents your uh, uh, phases all three phases of line okay and uh, based on that you can do calculation so uh, we do not take that because we are neglecting shunt conductance right so we don't take it and uh, uh, if you want to like uh, there is one more thing if you want to uh, draw a single line diagram for all three phases it gets too much complicated right so what do we do we just uh, draw a single line diagram of only uh, one phase and then uh, we call it one line diagram or single line diagram okay in practice um, the whole power system is represented by means of standard symbols this symbols which we are going to discuss and uh, each component of that uh, comes together and forms a single line diagram or one line diagram so now let's see the components the first is a generator as you can see it is nothing but a circle and uh, they wrote g inside of it then we have a motor similar to generator they just wrote m inside of it uh, then there is interesting case of uh, two winding transformers okay uh, any two winding transformers can be shown like the uh, multiple ways like if you see here they have shown it with uh, two windings uh, primary winding secondary winding and then we have uh, mentioned the connection like if uh, my primary winding is having star connected with uh, ground uh, grounded star connection so on primary side we have drawn star connection and on if my secondary side is having a delta connection so we have drawn uh, delta on the secondary side okay so uh, the first one this which uh, in which uh, we represent it via coil is a uh, old method a new method or in recent methods uh, if you go into the substation if you are doing any uh, what do we call uh, internships uh, at uh, substation or any power station uh, if you ask the operator to if you ask the operator for the single line diagram of the substation uh, they will provide you the diagram and in that diagram you will see the transformers will be indicated with these uh, circles connected with each other okay so this is a modern way to uh, represent transformer uh, two circles connected with each other uh, just like Venn diagrams and then uh, again the connections the if you are having a star connection then star connection is drawn and then uh, if it is grounded then it, it, it must be grounded on primary side if it is primary side if it is secondary side then it is secondary side same with the delta connection if you are having delta connection on secondary side then just draw delta if you are having it primary side draw, draw it on primary side then again uh, if you want to draw a uh, three winding transformer uh, this one is the old method i think uh, by now you must be pretty much clear about the three winding transformers as well uh, because there's nothing nothing new in here we are just adding the extra coil here and uh, we are showing whatever uh, uh, whatever uh, uh, topology it is having of connection if it is having star then star if it is having delta then delta same with here as well we are just uh, connecting three circles together just like we did in uh, two because uh, we had two winding transformers so for three winding transformer we are connecting three circles together so uh, that uh, that was pretty much for a transformer now let's come to some other symbols so here you can see a star connection star connection is given by y or star if it is not grounded then we don't uh, um, mention uh, we don't uh, take the ground from the neutral point if it is grounded then we take a uh, grounding from neutral point so that is how we draw a star connection for delta connection you have already seen right we just draw a triangle uh, for delta connection then for current transformer or ct what do we do we just uh, take a straight line and then we uh, make a coil like uh, if you remember uh, whenever we studied uh, current transformer back then uh, it, uh, we represented by the way we used to connect it right the way we used to connect it with uh, my system okay 
uh, same ways for the potential transformer pt uh, you you connect in via coils and one of the reasons why we adapted the first uh, uh, method for uh, representing transformer is because for potential transformer we use this analogy okay so for uh, any other transformers we use this circles okay so that was potential transformer for circuit breaker what do we do we represent circuit breaker via this symbol for isolator we use this switch but uh, a switch symbol but uh, don't mistake it uh, don't uh, mistake it for a switch it is an isolator which uh, which will be always uh, around whenever you will uh, see a circuit breaker in the in your diagram right and then uh, we have a bus so bus is uh, directly represented by a straight line okay either vertical or horizontal for the lightning arrestor we are uh, having this uh, uh, hourglass like look a uh, uh, symbol look looking like hourglass so we represent uh, the lighting arrestor with this symbol now let's come to the single line diagram or one line diagram okay so uh, the the motivation uh, behind this uh, single line diagram what was the motivation behind this single line diagram so uh, any system uh, like uh, say if you are uh, uh, in the substation or uh, at generating station okay so at uh, what do we what do they do that the power which will be generated or transmitted over there will be three phase okay will be three phase so this three phase power system consists a number of generators there will be uh, so many generators there will be uh, transformers there will be lines going from here uh, going here to there here to there and there will be uh, so many different loads connected there will be so many different loads connected with them right uh, smaller or bigger there are number of loads for, uh, connected with each of the power system and that is the uh, main major uh, main major reason for power system to exist to uh, feed the power to the load so that we can consume the electricity right so uh, if you want to uh, draw the diagram for this whole system for three phase there when we have so many generators transformers right so it gets too complicated okay all these equipments uh, if you want to show all these equipments in a three phase so it gets too complicated and even if you manage to draw that it will be too uh, difficult to understand for the person who is viewing the diagram okay but uh, what happens if you have seen uh, uh, any diagram you will notice that all the three phase power system in uh, uh, any uh, all the phases all three phases are um, always uh, have almost uh, similar amount of uh, flow go going on right all three phase of the power systems are exactly similar all all three phases right so we can represent it by only one phase okay so when we represent a three phase power system by only one phase we call this system a single line diagram okay and what does it do the single line diagram it uh, it shows us the main connection then we show uh, it shows us uh, arrangement of components and the flow of the power okay so we can see the generators motors transformers load transmission lines we can see everything with the help of uh, this single line diagram we can understand the flow of the power in my system right so uh, generator and transformers uh, connections star delta neutral grounding all this indicated with the help of symbols which we have just seen okay the symbols which we have just seen and uh, uh, depending upon whatever information which uh, which is required uh, in uh, in any system uh, to study any component or uh, uh, any other thing which will may be present in the diagram but it is also possible that that thing will not be present in the diagram as well okay uh, for example let's say if you want to do a steady state analysis of circuit breaker okay and uh, uh, in order to do that you must require uh, the relays right 
or the switches but uh, uh, you may not be able to see the relays in the single line diagram of uh, your system okay so uh, it is uh, uh, good to understand the flow of the power but uh, uh, for the fault calculation or uh, fault analysis yes it will be helpful but uh, uh, it is not necessary that every single time it will be so much helpful to you okay so uh, that's that about a single line diagram now let's see this image what they have done in this diagram you can see uh, this is a single line diagram of a simple power system what they have done they have taken uh, first generator this one is the generator this generator consists of 25 MVA 11 KV okay and its reactance is 1.2 ohms okay and uh, it is connected with the star winding uh, it, uh, star winding is connected with reactance and it is grounded then uh, do you remember what was the symbol of this yeah it is a circuit breaker connected with my bus then again connected with another circuit breaker then we are remember what was this yeah this was transformer the first transformer and uh, if you see both the sides primary and secondary are grounded and connected with the star connection okay the first uh, first transformer this transformer t1 it is having a uh, uh, rating of 10 mva and it is having 33 kv on the primary side and 11 kv on the secondary side right and it is having reactance of 15 ohm on uh, high tension side um, which means on the primary side right because the uh, primary side is 33 kv then we, uh, we are having again a circuit breaker and uh, then we are having a line which is going and then before the transmitter uh, sorry before uh, second transformer we are having another circuit breaker and then we are having second transformer so rating of this second transformer is 15 uh, sorry rating of this uh, second transformer is 15 MVA and it is a three, uh, 33 by 6.6 .6 kV transformer so on the primary side we are having 33 kV on the secondary side we are having 6.6 .6 kV uh, the reactance of this is 12 ohm and uh, our primary side is connected with the uh, star connection which is grounded and secondary connection uh, secondary side it is connected with delta connection then from this delta connection we are getting uh, uh, the power is going uh, the the line is going to another circuit breaker and then we have a feeder this is a vertical line and it is going uh, it is get, it, it is getting distributed in two loads two different uh, 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 sources the first one via circuit breaker it is connecting to the second transformer you see here too the second transformer the second transformer uh, has the rating of 15 MVA 6.6 .6 kV and reactance of 1.3 ohms and it is connected with the star connection which is having resistive element and it is grounded over here and in, if you see the uh, second uh, second line which we, which is going to parallel to them it is connected to a load A okay it is connected to the some load uh, let's call it uh, load a uh, through the circuit breaker and the load which is connected is given of 15 megawatt and 6.6 .6 kv and it is having 8 point, uh, 0.85 lagging power factor okay so this is how we uh, represent any line or any system with the help of single line diagram now let's quickly move to impedance diagram so here you can see this is an impedance diagram for um, any balanced operating condition so for uh, if you want to draw uh, impedance diagram for any balanced operating condition you can draw it um, with the help of single line diagram okay so uh, the power system which we have seen this this power system for this power system the impedance diagram will look like uh, like this okay so in impedance diagram what do we do uh, whatever generator we have we represent that generator as a voltage source and uh, 
we connect those uh, generators this wa those uh, water sources with uh, series resistance and inductive resistance okay so when when you saw that uh, generator one this it is connected with c resistive source inductive source okay then what did we had it uh, sorry then what did we had that uh, that was connected via circuit breaker okay uh, here in impedance diagram we don't uh, carry the circuit breaker what do we do we connect it uh, directly with the transformer t1 so see here we are connecting this generator t uh, for one with transformer one right then what we are doing uh, after connecting it there is again an impedance and uh, resistance over here and then we connect transformer 1 and transformer 2 with the help of a uh, pi model okay uh, there are two models which uh, can be connected uh, which connect uh, my transmission line uh, one is called t model another one is called pi model the one you which you are seeing here is the pi model you see here uh, it, this this whole section if you see come uh, see it carefully this section looks like pi see we are having pi made here right so uh, what do we do in this pi uh, pi representation or pi model now the first transformer we connect uh, uh, its reactance and uh, resistance we take second uh, the another transformer we take its resistance and uh, reactance and then we connect them with uh, uh, two of my uh, shunt compensation devices uh, we take capacitors here so we take capacitors we connect them and in between them what do we do we put inductance and resistance again okay so uh, this way we connect them and then again you can see the second uh, second transformer transformer 2 which was here see uh, transformer 1 connected with transformer 2 so here uh, this part will be the pi model this part will be transformer 2 which will be connected here see transformer 2 after transformer 2 what did we had we had a load and we had a generator 2 right we had a uh, this load load a and then we had a generator 2 so you can see we have a load see uh, we are having a load which is connected again with the uh, resistance and inductance and uh, uh, inductance or reactance you can say okay and uh, we have the generator 2 which is again uh, represented as a voltage source and it is connected with the resistance and inductance so this is how you draw impedance diagram of uh, uh, any single line uh, any system which we have represented with the help of single line diagram now after drawing impedance diagram let's go to the reactance diagram okay what is the reactance diagram so uh, if you want to draw a reactance diagram you can draw it from the impedance uh, impedance diagram as as well okay uh, what do you do in order to draw a reactance diagram you just have to uh, remove remove all the um, uh, resistances uh, all the resistances from uh, different uh, um, equipments okay you only uh, what do you need to do you only need to uh, keep only resistance uh, sorry you only need to keep only reactances okay so um, reactance diagram is drawn by neglecting effective resistances of generator armature and transformer winding resistance okay uh, you can also remove the transmission line resistance as well which means uh, the pi model which we had will can also be neglected you can remove it okay you can remove the line line charging or uh, if you have any magnetizing circuit of transformer which you have drawn you can remove it as well so if i want to draw a reactance diagram of uh, the power system which we have just seen or, or the single line diagram of this uh, whatever the system which we have seen so we can do it from the Impo uh, impedance diagram or we can also do it from the single line diagram so let's try to draw it from the uh, impedance diagram itself so see we have a uh, generator one what uh, what we will do we will connect this generator one with uh, this uh, reactance directly okay uh, we will remove the resistances right Re uh, remember i we just told uh, we just uh, discussed about that we will remove the resistances so 
we took generator one we remove resistance we connected it with a uh, simply reactance of it then there was transformer connected with generator one so uh, as i've said we can uh, neglect the uh, uh, transformer winding resistance so we will not be drawing this transformer hole instead what we will do we will just draw a reactance and we will call it transformer t1 see we just draw reactance and we called it transformer t1 then we had a line which we represented with the help of pi model so instead of drawing the whole pi model you can just draw a reactance and write pi uh, or line uh, pi line or pi model line okay so that's what we did then you have a uh, transformer too but again you don't have to include the transmission line uh, resistances so uh, instead of draw, draw uh, representing it with the uh, like this you can represent it with just one single coil or just one simple reactance then uh, you have generator 2 and load so there is a generator 2 just like generator 1 we are representing it with only with the help of a reactance we are neglecting the resistances so uh, reactance and generator 2 and always remember whatever load you will be connecting uh, whatever load you will be connecting here always remember to always connect it in the parallel of your uh, system always connect it in parallel and always take care of the nature of the load always see what nature your load is having okay so uh, you should always uh, take care of that so if you want to check it uh, in this figure you can see that uh, the load a is having a lagging power factor okay uh, and whenever the load has a lagging power factor what happens the uh, load will be uh, will be possessing an inductive nature so because my load is possessing an inductive nature we are representing uh, representing load with the help of reactance okay if my ha if my load has a, a leading power factor that uh, that would have mean that my load is having a uh, capacitive nature and at that time we would have been uh, represented the load with the help of capacitance so that was the reactance diagram now let's quickly come to the per unit representation of the same system the same uh, uh, single phase transformer which we have seen but uh, before going to that i would recommend you to check out what is a per unit uh, we have discussed in previous videos about uh, what is per unit system and uh, how do we uh, how do we calculate the per unit values or base values of uh, various uh, electrical and non electrical quantities okay so if you haven't uh, aware of power unit values if you want to check out the videos you can check out you must be uh, uh, the i button must be flashing on the top right side corner of uh, the video so you can click on that and you can check out the video so uh, if you don't have an idea i will just give you a small glimpse about it that what is a per unit value of any quantity so it is nothing but the ratio of actual uh, value with respect to the base value of whatever your quantity is it is just a ratio of the actual value of the quantity divided by the uh, base value of your quantity okay so if you uh, take this uh, uh, our system this system itself uh, so before going to that let's discuss few things like uh, if you are having a power system uh, it has number of transformers right so while we calculate the per unit impedance of uh, all these transformers you must have uh, uh, base kva or uh, base mva whatever you are taking uh, you must have this kva and mva equal on both of the sides of the transformers okay so uh, uh, what does that means it means the voltage ratio which uh, you have of your transformer it must be equal on the both of the sides okay and uh, voltage ratio must be uh, equal to the turns ratio okay voltage ratio of the transformer must be equal to turns ratio you must have studied in uh, if you have studied the transformer you must have studied that n1 by n2 must be equal to v1 by v2 must be equal to i2 by i1 if you remember that okay Trans ratio always uh, 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 matches the voltage ratio of your transformer. Okay. So if you can do that, if uh, which uh, almost every time happens, so uh, that will make uh, your per impedance, uh, per unit impedance equal on both of the sides. Okay. So now let's consider a single phase transformer. 
uh, let's take a single phase transformer which uh, you can see in this figure uh, it is having voltage v1 on the primary side and voltage v2 on the secondary side as you can see uh, primary side current is i1 uh, secondary side current is i2 and the primary side impedance is uh, uh, z1 and uh, secondary side we are having z2 okay so uh, if you remember that uh, uh, v1 by v2 is always equal to i2 by i1 okay my apologies i i have mentioned wrong it, it is always equal to i2 by i1 So V2, uh, V1 by V2 is always equal to I2 by I1. Okay, so turns ratio must be equal to the voltage ratio and uh, both of these must be equal to the inverse of the current ratio. Okay, so N1 by N2 equal to V2, V1, uh, sorry, N1 by N2 equal to V1 by V2 is equal to I2 by I1. So we are having V1 by V2 is equal to I2 by I1. Uh, when we rearrange these terms, we will be having uh, V1 I1 equal to V2 I2. Okay, rearranging this, we can get V1 I1 into V2 I2. See, like this. So, uh, if you remember that uh, uh, what condition did we had for the base impedance, uh, for base impedance of uh, my system, if you remember from previous lectures, the condition for base impedance or the formula for the base impedance was base voltage divided by the base current. Okay. So if I want to ca calculate the base impedance on the primary side, it will be primary side base voltage divided by the primary side base current, which is V1 by I1. Okay. So base impedance for the primary side will be V1 by I1. Okay. Now if I want to calculate the per unit impedance referred to the primary side, then what will be the per unit impedance from the of our primary side? Remember, I've told you what is the per unit value of, uh, if I want to find the per unit value of uh, anything, what we will do, we will simply uh, take the ratio of actual value, uh, we will t actually uh, take the ratio of actual value divided by the base value. So actual value we have just uh, uh, calculate, uh, we can see here is a Z1, right? And base value we just calculated V1 by I1, so we just replaced it here we are having z1 divided by v1 by i1 and uh, here you can see uh, we will take i1 in numerator so we will have z1 into i1 divided by v1 as our per unit impedance okay for primary side now if uh, uh, cal we want to calculate for the secondary side what will be the uh, base impedance for secondary side so again uh, base impedance is nothing but uh, the ratio of uh, base voltage of the secondary side divided by the base current of the secondary side. So base voltage divided by base current is nothing but V2 divided by I2, right? It is nothing but V2 divided by I2. But again, uh, okay, let's uh, let it be V2 divided by I2. Now uh, let's calculate the per unit impedance referred to secondary. If I want to calculate the per unit impedance with respect to secondary, what we will do? We will take uh, the uh, value of uh, secondary, uh, we will take the ratio of uh, actual value with respect to base value. Okay, so what base value my uh, secondary, um, what is the base value of my second, uh, secondary side impedance is V2 by I2. And what is the actual value? It is Z2, right? It is Z2. But if I want to represent Z2, can't I represent it uh, with the help of uh, in the terms of Z1 as well, right? So instead of uh, Z2, can't I write Z1 into V2 whole square divided by V1 whole square, right? And then uh, we will take the ratio in the uh, denominator which ratio this ratio v2 by v uh, i2 okay 
so by doing that uh, we will uh, we, the the uh, current uh, one current value will be cut out and we will be left with this z1 into v2 into i2 divided by v1 square okay now v2 v2 also be uh, no sorry there is no uh, v2 v2 okay so instead uh, uh, instead of uh, writing the whole thing can't we represent uh, represent it with the help of z1 i1 divided by v1 why you say because uh, remember what condition we had like v1 i1 equal to v2 i2 okay so instead of v2 i2 can't we write v1 i1 right we can write v1 i1 so if we write v1 i1 this v1 and the uh, one of these v1 we are having square in the denominator will be cut out so when we will uh, that will be cut it out we will be left with z1 into i1 divided by v1 okay and uh, the value of z1 into i1 divided by v1 is equal to the uh, value of z1 into i1 divided by v1 which is which was on the uh, per unit impedance on the primary side right so the per unit impedance on the both the sides is equal okay both the uh, per unit impedance on both the sides of a single phase transformer is equal but to calculate these values we have taken some assumption here okay what assumption we have taken uh firstly uh, we have also uh, already discussed that base kva or mv on the both of the side must be uh, must be same we also said that uh, the voltage uh, voltage values uh, on both the sides they must have the equal ratio right so now for the three phase transformer uh, or three phase power system the whole power system let's say uh it consists of transformers and the base value how do we uh, take the base value of any transformers any three phase transformers um firstly you must have to uh, remember that the base value of base kva or base mva whatever you are taking it must be same on both of the sides okay both the sides of transformer must have equal base kva or base mva then the line to line kilowatt on the primary side uh which whichever you are uh, having whatever is the line to line uh, kilowatt you are having kilovolt or kv i'm talking about so uh, you will be having on the primary side will be the base kv for the primary and whatever line to line kv you have on the secondary side will be the base kv for the secondary side okay and if you are having a single phase transformer connected as a three phase unit then the three phase rating of the of the transformer is the sum of the uh, sum of sum of uh, whatever single phase rating there is present for every single transformer you are considering okay so the per unit uh, impedance for a three phase transformer will be same as that uh, for each uh, each of your uh, uh, single phase transformer okay now discussing about the per unit impedance of three phase transformer so uh, let's say you have a system you have three phase transformer system which is connected with uh, with uh, th uh, you are having three windings three different windings and all three are uh, them connected in the star formation or in star topology okay let's call them z1 z2 and z3 okay so the kva and uh, kv rating of that uh, uh windings all three windings will be different right so if you want to express their impedances in per unit then what do you, uh, what you will do so you firstly you have to take the again kva and mva for uh, all three winding must be equal okay either kva or mva whatever you considering it must be equal and whatever rated line to line voltage you will be having for uh, uh, each of their windings you select that on the basis of uh, the kva of whatever the uh, whatever the line uh, you are having okay whatever if you are having this line first line then you will be selecting the um, line to line voltage for this three phase transformer uh, three phase winding as a base kv okay for on that winding only okay if you are having second line then you will be take the line to line voltage as the base kv for second line and uh, for third line the line to line voltage for third line will be the base kv for the third line like that so uh 
that was about the uh, power unit impedance calculation of three phase transformer as well so i i think already the lecture is uh, has been dragged too long so let's keep this lecture till here uh, in the next lecture we will be um, discussing about uh, um, we will be discussing further about uh, the representation of uh, my power system components uh, we have already seen in today's lecture about the single phase line diagram and uh, uh, how do we draw the impedance diagram and reactance diagrams so now uh, in the uh, upcoming lectures we'll be seeing what are some applications of per unit system and uh, we'll be seeing uh, examples of uh, per unit impedance diagrams okay so uh, if you guys are having any doubts any queries regarding this lecture or any other lectures which you have uh, which you have seen in the playlist before uh, please note that down below in the comment section i will try my best to answer those doubts as soon as i can and if you have any feedback related to lecture if you think the lectures are going too fast if they are too slow if uh, there is some uh, explanation or there are some mathematical calculations which are missing i know there are some calculations missing which uh, must be difficult for you so please mention it in the comment section below so from the next time i will be um, i will try to improve on those points whatever weak points will be having uh, so if you have any any feedback all the feedbacks are welcome and uh, let's keep this lecture till here i will be seeing you in the next lecture thank you very much for listening and bye bye